Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. I'm Ed Chamanino. Today on Ciao Italia, the feast of the seven fishes. That's it, real fast, real fast. Come on, get that baseball arm moving. Oh, oh <laughs> Okay. Okay. Don't shake ketchup. No. Basta. Sì. Sì. Sono molto delicato. Mm, molto delicato. Grazie a lei. Grazie Mariana, grazie a voi. You know my mother's favorite leftover sandwich. Come on, you're Italian. This <laughs> beautiful. Look at how pretty this is. It's delicious. How do you like that? I think I think you're great. <laughs> And now we're ready to do the twist. So, looks gorgeous, smells wonderful. I use my hands. I love this woman. Okay. <laughs> if you lived in Boston, Massachusetts, the last place you'd expect to find Mayor Tom Menino would be here, cooking shrimp, except Christmas Eve, when he, like millions of Italians all over the world, take time out to celebrate La Vigilia, one of their favorite Christmas Eve traditions, the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Our celebration began with a quick trip to the mayor's favorite Italian market to pick up the bacala. Amelia, how are you, pal? Hello. How are we doing? You're Marianne, Good. of course. Nice Hi, Emilio. You. Good to see you. Where's your dad in the back with the bacala? He's, he's out back with the bacala. Let's go, come on. Mm, bacala. Bacala, mm-mm. Angelo, come mm. vai? Benissimo. Tutto bene? Si, sí, benissimo, grazie. <laughs> Good to see you. How are you doing, Angelo? Good to see you. Good, the mayor, how are you? Busy? Very busy, very busy. I see. This is that time of the year. You know, it's never enough for people behind this counter and do what we do. Oh, this mm. is a dry bacala, which what I do, oh. I put in the water 48 hours before I start to sell. Then the people they take home and they still put them in the water and this will be nice and ready for the See Christmas how beautiful evening. and fresh that it's looks? Fresh. But that's not how it starts mm. out, right? No, it's a, it's a dry, comes dry. Some of this bacala comes uh, either from Canada mm. or from uh, other places where the cold yeah. weather is. Yeah. So, and we bring it in uh, Every year, and it's a and big it's sell popular, for us. Right? Very popular, right? Especially for La Vigilia. Yes. yes. And this uh, it can be done in uh, different ways. Yeah. You know, you can do fry, you can do salad. Mm -mm. Okay. I think we should take a couple pounds. Let's what take a couple think? pounds with us and start cooking them. Okay, right. I can wrap it up for you right now. Okay, All right, you can take perfect. it. Perfect. Thank you. And then once we have it made, you know, maybe we'll save you a little sample. How's that? Oh, I'll appreciate that. So, Mayor, I hope you have some ideas on how you want this done. I do. I have very specific ideas. Uh, okay. I, my mother used to make this all the time for us. Mm. On Christmas Eve, the best meal of the year. This looks a lot different than that, doesn't sure. it? Exactly. Once it's rehydrated, look how beautiful. You got to get all the salt off, though. Exactly. Yeah, Otherwise, oh, too salty. You know, too salty. All right, yeah. that should be go. about enough. And you we'll think it's enough, that may have I think so. Yeah. Uh, that's enough for me. Yeah. Because we're gonna we're gonna put it with other things. There you go. Angelo, Enjoy it. Buona festa. Buona festa. Grazie a lei. Okay. Thank you. Ci vediamo presto. Si, ciao ciao. Ciao ciao. Doesn't it look tender? Looks very tender. Looks very good. I mean, the bacala is a tradition of Christmas Eve. If you know, it's a, a bacala is a salt card that you know my mother used to have for 24 hours, 48 hours. Take soak it, and then on Christmas Eve she used to make a bacala salad. You yeah. know, it's just wonderful. You know, well, we're going to make a salad today, Mayor, oh, and for you at home as well. And you can see now how that is just Look how it's, it's easy to flake. See. We eat it like that now? We could, but we're going to do a nice salad with it. Oh. So we're going to let that cool down a little bit. Okay. Because we're going to use our hands. If you're Italian and you're a cook, you've got to use le mani, you, you, see? Your hands not just to cook, to talk or to. To talk or to. Okay. So what we need with this salad is uh, some celery. So I'm going to have you cut that up. Just dice it up. And while we're doing that, we should tell people that, you know, this is for the La Vigilia, which is the the feast that happens on Christmas Eve. And in Italy, especially southern Italy, you have the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Now, I have to tell you, I was just in Italy a couple weeks ago, and I was asking some friends in northern Italy 
about what they cook for La Vigilia. I said, do you do the Feast of the Seven Fishes? They all looked at me like I had horns. They really had never heard of the Feast of the Seven Fishes in northern Italy. Wow. Which, that kind of makes sense, don't you think? Yeah, you know, different regions have different uh, yeah. traditions. And uh, I can remember just growing up as a little boy in Hyde Park, my grandmother and grandfather, talking about seven fishes. Very special. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a black fast for the Roman Catholics, and uh, we couldn't eat fish. But what do seven fishes mean? Why seven? Well, Mayor, that is a loaded question. You know, that's almost a political question because... We don't have, poli we don't have loaded political <laughs> questions, yeah? The seven fishes could mean a number of things to a variety of people, depending on who you talk to. There's always the last full week of Advent, seven days before Christmas. That could mean why we have the Feast of the Seven Fishes. There is also the seven deadly sins. That's another reason why we could have the Feast of the Seven Fishes. And you have your reason, which is? The seven sacraments. The seven sacraments. Uh, a priest just told me that recently, that that's why we have the seven fishes on the Okay. Christmas Eve. When you think about it, most of the immigrants who came to this country came from southern Italy. That's right. And they brought those traditions with them. So obviously they brought a fish culture with them because if you are from the south, fish is a big part of the diet, big part of the Mediterranean sure diet. Is. And this would make sense. So I think that this was something that traveled with immigrants to this country. They embellished it however they wanted to, and it became the, fish, the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So here are our potatoes. So I'm going to put them right in there. How are you doing on that? I'm doing all right. My peppers and my okay. celery. You got peppers. You, you don't need to do all of it. Just I mean, I probably need about a half a cup of that. A half a cup. So while you're doing that, I'm going to do garlic. So what are some of the other types of fish dishes you like to do for Christmas Eve besides well, like the, the bacala? Uh, the shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp scampi, fried shrimp, mm -hmm. lobster salad, mm. smelts. Smelts. Yeah. That was that's my mother's favorite. Smelts. Yeah. Yeah. Not too many you know, people like smelts. I think smelts are a wonderful dish, and uh, I I always enjoy it, on, especially on on uh, Christmas Eve. Okay, that's good. I love that knife you're using. It's a wonderful knife. I yeah. bought it many years ago. Okay, so now that we have that, why don't we flake up this fish? While you're doing that, I'm gonna. You want me to flake I'm up? gonna work with il diavolo. Il diavolo? Diavolo, yeah. yeah. Oh, Madonna, yeah. Madonna, Madonna mia. mia. Okay. Ooh, so uh, here you go. So just all you want to do is, you got to use your hands for this. Oh, thing. I like that you know, idea. You oh. got to take it apart, leave it in big pieces like that. Oh, I so like So this. this is from my garden. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How hot do you like it? Not, you know, my, you know somewhat yeah, you hot, but not. You don't like it too hot? Okay, I'm not going to put too much in. Just a little bit of heat is nice. You could leave this out if you didn't want... The red pepper in this, you could just leave it out. I Sometimes I put a red pepper paste in this that I... Uh, some people like it real hot, some yeah, get mild. Yeah, just a few little bits here. And then we're going to put in some parsley, some extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice, which is good. Which do you prefer? Lemon juice. Lemon juice, me too. Okay, that goes in there. And then let's get some parsley. See, it's, this is this has got a lot of flavor going on. Now, whenever I use parsley in this, I always think of my mother because my mother always used the stems, too. Do you use the stems? Yeah, sometimes we do. Yeah, she says all the flavor's in the stems. My mother used to, used to have a little garden in my yard and fresh vegetables. So what makes this dish is using really fresh ingredients. So it was so nice of uh, Emilio to give us the bacala and Angelo. And that was such a great store, wasn't it? That's right. Tutto, tutto Italiano. Well, really today tutto we're Italian. cooking Tutto Italiano, that's for sure. I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil to this. Beautiful. You're going to have the first taste of this, Mayor. And then I like with this capers and brine. That just Whoa. adds a nice, spritey taste nice. to this that. salad. How colorful it is. Isn't it pretty? About a tablespoon. We don't measure anything, do we? No, we that's, I can remember my aunt. I say, Aunt Rose, she, she, I says, why don't you write a cookbook about how you make all these Italian dishes? Eh, a little and pinch of this? Me, Try me, it's a pinch of that, a pinch of that. <laughs> we make that decision as we cook. We, don't, right. we can't say a cup, load, a cup of this, a half a cup of that. That's the way they, the, the Italians cook. It smells so sweet and fresh.
And if you start with good bacala to begin bacala. with. Bacala. So there it is. The first of the seven fishes. Can Finito. See. Okay, so are we going to put anything in this flour? Yeah, will you please put some salt and pepper? Salt and pepper to taste. Put a little taste. flavoring. A piacere, they say in Italy. A piacere, a piacere. Yeah. okay. Mm -mm. To taste. Now, where did, it, so this is very simple. This is just, you know, fried shrimp. Very shirt. simple. And this is something you had every Christmas Eve? Every Christmas Eve we have this dish. In, but we cook about 10, 15 pounds of it. Mm. Because of the folks that come. I stand in front of the uh, stove for about three hours doing it. Yeah. I enjoy it. So, you know, it's, yeah, you know, you know I Mary, can tell. Christmas Eve is a very special night of the year. All right, what are we going to fry this in? Uh, olive oil. Olive oil. Very, okay. Very, the best. And then what are you going to season it with? Anything else? Well, no, can... that's all just salt and pepper. No fresh lemon juice no over fresh, the top? After we, when we eat it, yeah. we'll put the lemon juice yeah. on it. Or okay, you got to have some uh, cocktail sauce, whatever you Ooh, choose to. Cocktail sauce. You choose that's to. not Italian, Mayor. No, but no. <laughs> we got to cheat somewhere. <laughs> we have to. Once in a while, we have to, some of those other folks, yeah. pull them in to see how good we eat. I mean. What part of Italy does your family come from? We came from Avellino in the village of Guatemala. Which ah, is uh, two hours of east of uh, uh, Naples. Naples, and my uh, family came from Avellino, close by. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So we must be cousins, Mary. Some place, kissing okay. cousins. Kissing cousins, yeah. Oh boy, we've got a lot of shrimp here. This is going to be quite a feast. Here we go. Now, oh, Mary, now how did you know that oil was hot enough? I, I saw little bubbles in it, and I <laughs> knew that the oil was ready. <laughs> For these shrimp to be fried as quickly as possible. Well, you're very shrewd because they're starting to get a little pink and brown on the edges. But really, for those of you who are neophytes at doing this, the temperature should really be at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And how are you going to measure that? Well, in the old days, they used to just take a pinch of breadcrumbs or flour and put it in, and if it bubbled up right away, they knew the oil was hot enough. But really, whenever you're frying anything, use a thermometer. That way you'll be sure. Christmas Eve in our family is much bigger than Christmas Day. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. because the kids on Christmas Day, they open their toys in Santa Claus. But, you know, uh, but Santa Claus is disappearing from our family these days because our kids are getting much older. Uh -huh. And so, the, you know, but... Oh, I still believe. I do, too. I you don't believe, believe in Babbo Natale. You don't get anything you don't believe. <laughs> so you take them out onto paper towels. Right, take out yeah. And you would eat those immediately, right? So somebody would have to be at the stove on Christmas Eve getting all of this ready. And you don't want to eat cold fried shrimp, do you? Well, sometimes. Well, in my house, we kick about, cook about 10, 15 pounds. Ooh. So you're not going to have like this, you know, a small amount. But mm -hmm. 10, 15 pounds, you know, takes a long while to cook those. And, right. Uh, people enjoy it. Well, I like things either hot or cold. I'm not an in-between person, so if I was going to have this, I would want to eat those right wow. now. I would love to taste one of those right now. Well, we're going to give you one. Whew. I thought he'd never one. ask. Okay. Ooh, they're hot. They're That's really why you wait hot. a couple of seconds yeah. and be all set. Oof, they look good. How do they taste? Mmm. A little more flavoring? Mmm. Mm -mm. No? Perfect. They're good. good. Mm. Yeah. Very good. You're a good job of flavor, Marianne. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's that mother's touch, you know, just mm -hmm. very, a little pinch just of this. Just enough salt. Just a little pinch of this mm. and a little pinch of that. Oh, very good. Mr. Mayor, we have now the bacala salad, right? That's right, bacala. We have the shrimp. shrimp. Mm. We have now a the tuna. good tuna dish, right. Now, this is for people who really don't want to work with fresh tuna. This is the answer. You start with good canned tuna. And I don't mean that generic stuff in the grocery store. I mean a really good Italian imported tuna. And you want to buy it like this. You see how this comes in nice big chunks? Mm -hmm. Or if you couldn't find this, you could look for this. This is another good option here. But make sure you're using good tuna in olive oil. I don't want this dish to have tuna that's too fine. I want to leave some texture. So what I would like you to do, Mr. Mayor, is to take this tuna and chunk it in there. You're going to leave the oil that the tuna came in with the tuna, okay? And flake it. Well, don't get it too flaky. I want it to, be, to have some chunk to it. So just coarsely chunk it up. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to start making a sauce. This is actually going to be a tuna with a rigatoni dish. Because I don't know about you, but on Christmas Eve, 
we always had some form of pasta with fish. I told you earlier, it used to be the calamari with the tentacles and the broccoli. Today, it's a la mariana. So I'm going to make a sauce with just some onion, garlic, a little bit of hot red pepper, and some parsley. So we want to take a nice bunch of parsley. This is from my garden mare. I had, a great garden I had there. my husband get that out of the garden. These onions are also from the garden. You see how they sound so nice and fresh? And all I'm really going to do is chop all this together. I want to get this into just kind of a fine mix. Okay. Well, that's looking good. You're just cutting up those uh, tomatoes now, just coarsely. Don't have to be too thin, because I want. I like this to have a little bit of texture. This whole dish, because we're going to do this with rigatoni. Well, I like this with a nice shortcut nice of rigatoni. rigatoni. Mm. So right. this is. Remember, that's our batuto. This is our onion, our garlic, our red pepper, our parsley, a little bit of salt and pepper. So I think we should add a little greco di tufo, oh, don't you? Because wow, that's the region own. that you and I are that's right. from. Right, know. So we're going to add some, and I'm going to let the, I'm going to raise the heat now and let this cook down a little bit. Just going to let that reduce somewhat. And while that is cooking down, we are going to cook the pasta. We so go. we're using whole wheat rigatoni. Do you like whole wheat? I love whole wheat. It's healthy. Okay, good. It's very healthy. So put a half a pound in there, and of course we salted the water. And now, how long does it take to cook pasta? This is rigatoni, so this is a pasta seca, shortcut pasta. Maybe 12, 12 minutes? Maybe 12 minutes. Well, how are we going to know for sure? Well, you know, we'll pick it out and, and taste it. Exactly. That's See, how that's you do it. See, that's why he's the mayor. That's why. We're going to take it out and we're going to taste it. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to add some capers. I love capers in brine for this, although capers and salt are very good too. But I like the little spritey flavor that the brine gives that. So we've got the capers in. And then here come those tomatoes that oh. you cut up. Those mm. sun-dried tomatoes. Now you begin to see we're building oh. lots of flavor here, Mayor. Sure Lots is. of flavor. This is like building a city budget. you got to start with the little things and just build up. Now we're going to add that tuna that you flaked up. Here it goes. So that is the tuna. Get that in. And we want to add a little bit more oregano. Let me put the wine back here for a second. Add a little bit more oregano to this. I like oregano in this. Don't you love to use oregano? Oregano does good taste. Yeah. You could use peas for this, green beans, whatever happens to be fresh and local. I found these snow peas. All I did was blanch them just for about a minute or so because I didn't want them to be mushy. They should have a little bit of a crunch to them. They go in to give this a lot of nice color. So this dish is perfect for a La Vigilia or any day of the mm. week that you want to have it. What do you that think, looks Mary? very good. Eh? All right, so maybe we should check the pasta now. That's a Mary and Esposito special. We got it. So now we have these beautiful whole wheat rigatoni with the tuna, the sun-dried tomatoes, the hot pepper, the wine, the parsley, the garlic, the onions, and the snow peas. How bad can this be? Uh, it can't be bad at all, let me tell you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, are you ready for the final unveiling of the next dish? I'm ready. You end up a little salt. Ta da! A little pepper, a little seasoning. Look at those. The smelts. Smelts. You know, the smelts are something I get on Christmas Eve every year, 5 o'clock in the morning. Great. I go to the fish market and buy the smelts. And it's just. So Very this special. is perfect because this is one of my mother's favorite dishes. We always, you always had to have smelts Smelt. on Christmas Eve. And really, that's the season for them. That's right. So we're going to put the smelts in here, just like we did the, uh, shrimp. the shrimp. And these are already clean, but if you look into a smelt, you can still feel a few of those little bones. In fact, let me pull that out for you. See that? Yeah. We're cooking these with that bone in. You know why? That's protein. And the bones are so small that you won't even, you just chew them and eat them. But if you wanted to take them out, then you could do just that. And then they would lie flat like that. Mm -hmm. But, hey, a little bone, a little fish bone, bone that is tiny like that is not going to hurt you. So let's get those all floured up. 
And the best way to have these is just fried. Fried, and then at the end, you want to put some coarse salt on them, maybe just a squirt of pepper. lemon juice, if you'd like, a little bit of pepper. And then uh, just get them really tossed well. Sometimes we'd make those in tomato sauce, too. I don't know if you ever did them that way, but just a no. very simple tomato sauce. And that's all there is to it. So now we're ready to fire up that pan again and oh. brown up these smelts. This is what we do every Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. The smelts are going in, and they are only going to take, you see how small they are, a couple minutes, if that, to cook. I'm going right. to turn that down there just better, a little bit. Yeah. They're cooking very quickly. They're, they're such, cooking they're, very quickly. The small ones this year. Right. And the important thing when you're frying like this is use a big enough pan and don't put, don't crowd. Don't put a lot in at one time. Otherwise, you're going to steam everything instead of allowing it to brown. So be patient a little bit at a time. Turn them over. Boy, they look good. They look so delicate because they're fresh. Fresh. Very enough. fresh. Now, if you couldn't get fresh sardines, I mean fresh uh, smelts, you could use sardines. Some people like to use anchovy for this on Christmas Eve. Big white anchovy? White anchovy, oh. which wow. would be delicious too. So you would do the same process of flouring and just frying. Flour and frying. Once they start to turn a little opaque and brown looking, they're done. Whoa. They need a little salt, Mayor. I'm going to get some salt while you're... All right, get some salt. Yeah. You think they need salt? Well, Absolutely. The best thing to serve those with is a little drizzle of salt over oh, the top. A little wine? Mm, we need a little wine to go with this later mm. on. But that's about all there is to it. So I now see. we have all of our dishes plus a few more, right? That's right. We have a few more dishes at the... For the feast of the seven fishes. Thank God we didn't do the 12 fishes. <laughs> Word of the next year. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Mayor, after all that work, we are ready for La Vigilia. Um, La Vigilia. What a man, oh, <laughs> Today, What a great meal we have here. Seven we, different dishes. Seven fish dishes. The feast of the seven fishes. And there's a, there are a lot of variety of different types of dishes you could do, but we started out right there with that bacala salad. You were a little skeptical mm. because that has potatoes and peppers and capers, mm. olive oil, vinegar, and it's a cold room temperature salad. It's the very first time I had bacala that way. It's delicious. I'm so glad you liked it. a little taste to it. And then what did you do? I did the easy ones, the shrimp, <laughs> the fried shrimp, the fried smelts. They're the easy ones. And that's when I do every um, uh, Christmas Eve and then uh, you know, you did some of these, you, you're creative um, with the rigatoni here, a very creative dish. Angela did the calam, calam, stuffed calamari with seafood. Fabulous. Your and wife, Angela, pro provided right. that beautiful dish, and that's stuffed with mussels and, and, and scallops. Shrimp and, and everything. Oh, mm. it's delicious. But this is a very interesting one. Your own creation. Absolutely. This is the dish that we did with tuna, really good canned tuna, capers, white wine, hot red pepper, and some sugar snap peas. And it's perfect for Christmas mm. Eve or for any time of the sure. year. And then who made this beautiful dish? This beautiful dish was made by Tony Nunziati. He works for me and uh, a great cook besides uh, does a great job for the city of Boston. He did a fabulous job with the swordfish and uh, a little tomato, a little onion, a little um, parsley. He's got raisins mm. in there, a little uh, agro dolce sweet and sour taste going on there because that's alessi chiliana. That's right? Sweet. Yeah, it's and it's delicious. I mean, and now you have these uh, small clams here. Beautiful looking little clams, vongole, verace. Oh. Tony made that too? He sure did. I mean, I think he's a better cook than a worker myself. <laughs> uh, but just look at that. Just delicious of them. Well, this is just a small part of what you could do for the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for inviting me to your home. Uh, thank you, Miriam. Thanks for being here. And, uh, that's manja. Okay, and until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito.